Hey, what's up, guys? A new evil Electro Giant deck has been electrocuting Clash Royale and making everyone rage quit. By having Electro Giant and Balloon, it's double the win conditions that your opponent has to worry about. By baiting out buildings with the Electro Giant, the Balloon is free to fly straight towards Tower. And if the Evolved Knight's tanking for the Balloon and there's no building in sight, it's an instant good game. Fireball and Tornado ensures maximum versatility. Whether it's activating King Towers on defense or tornadoing things into the Electro Giant or away from your Balloon, you can get a lot of value. Your Tornado maneuvers will move you up the leaderboard. Both the number eight and nine player in the world are using this deck to energize their offense and ramp up the amount of rage quits. It's time to bewilder our opponents with Electro Giant Balloon and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using credit code Tag to make all the daily videos possible. It's time to slice through Scythe. He's gonna be cycling Barbarians in the back, so he's not even using his weapon of choice. He's got swords instead. Oh man, Barbarians and Electro Dragon. You know what, with both of those out of cycle, I'm gonna do the full degen play. Cycling the Electro Giant at the river. It's something that is going to jumpstart our opponent a little bit to make plays. Oh, yeah, it definitely did. He's chopping a bunch more elixir. We're going to fire a ball, and then we're going to go in for a bomber. Fortunately for us, he exhausted his arrows on top of the goblins because he wanted to immediately deal with our goblins. So I could actually get a king tower there by, like, making a bit of a chain with the chain of the electro dragon. But I decided not to. You know what? Double electro giant? Probably the play? Genuinely not a bad decision. Oh, this matchup is really bad, actually. I can't kill Battle Healers. And that's Evo Barbs now. Hmm. I wonder if he's able to heal up the Barbarians. I hope not. I really don't want those Barbarians to get it healed up right now. As long as the Battle Healer dies, we're fine. But it is starting to get that infinite heal glitch going. And that Barbarian did get inside the heal. Man, please don't get any damage. All right, we're fine. Slightly scary for a sec, but we're vibing. We can go in for our Phoenix in the back left. And then try to go towards the Three Crown. But there's a chance that he just all ends me with an Oyster Golem. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen here. So I need to get a huge fireball tornado value. Don't even know if that's going to work. So we're going to try to separate our stuff, go in for a knight up top, and then fireball and everything if we can just go and kill the elixir golem for him. So if we can knock the elixir golem a little bit lower health, then we're going to be able to fireball and everything and get all the elixir back. Nice! <laughs> Mitigating and just trading evenly is something I'm okay with, because guess what? That means that I'm going to be standing strong with my one tower advantage. So if we're going to be towering over our opponent's towers, it's a vibe. You feel me? You know what? We can go Bomber here, and then we can go Electro Giant. And then we can Fire Ball on top of his Barbarians if we need to. Oh, he's dropping them in the back. That's so interesting, my man. That is really, really fascinating that you would do such a thing. He's going to Fire Ball. What if we knock away the Night Witch? And then we just let our Phoenix go ham in the left-hand side against the Battle Healer. Because if the Battle Healer can't heal up big pushes, that's how we're going to win. He's saying good luck. Yo, he's dipping out. Let's go. Making Elixir Golem Rage Quit is what we love to see. More so than the graveyard matches. These are the people that we never want to win matches. Beating Elixir Golem is the best feeling in the game. Because when you get hard countered by it, or you have a tough matchup like this one for us, there's nothing more terrifying and terrible than losing against someone that just spams Elixir Golems all on the same side. So beating Elixir Golem down at the point that it Rage Quits is a beautiful feeling. Yo, this guy's got the Headless Prince banner and we're ready to spook him. Anyone that is still engaged in Halloween activities is not ready for our level of scare. So I'm going to go in for the knight in the back. And this guy is actually going to give me a little bit of a nightmare. He is going to cycle the bowler, knocking back my knight. So even though it's a good trade for us getting the evolution, we're not going to get anything from that, sir. We're going to cycle the phoenix in the right-hand side. And there is a chance that the guy is going to have a balloon freeze deck with lumberjack. And if that's the case, it's not necessarily good for us to go in for our goblins because we could get barbarled. Instead, I'm going to go forward with our balloon and see if that gives us anything at all. Also, we can activate King Tower against this bowler, but I'm just going to let that roll. We could Fireball on top of the Inferno Dragon to get extra damage. There's so many choices with this deck. The unbelievable offensive potential is quite nice. It's going to have Graveyard, though, so definitely different for us. You know what? We're going to go Goblins, and then we're going to go in for a Bomber to go and pull back the Inferno Dragon, and we will minimize the amount of damage he gets, but he's going to freeze. A freeze cheese is real with this one. I'm not going to do any extra Elixir. I will sack that tower like it's my job. Sometimes you have to look at the game and be like, okay, pragmatically, I have to just not do anything. If I spend extra elixir, it's a waste because my tower is gone anyway. Here's the thing. That Electro Giant, despite being at one health, might be the way that we win. <laughs> it's cool to see that do that amount of damage. And then the Knight might seem stupid, but if it's tanking for the Balloon and all of his units are going towards the Three Crown afterward, that's totally fine by me. He's overspending to defend right now. And now without the tornado, we go Electro Giant on the other side. And I don't think he's going to get enough with his Baby Dragon and Skeleton King to get any pressure towards the Three Crown. 
Especially since we have so much damage potential and he doesn't have the Skeleton King ability really give him any value. Obviously, he could freeze, but I don't know if he wants to. He doesn't want to. He's doing it anyway. What if we freeze and fireball in the later stages? When he goes in for the freeze, we thought with the fireballs, the Inferno Dragon. Oh my gosh, wait, the Inferno Dragon died. This is going so much better than I thought. I thought we were screwed after we lost the tower. But keeping up the pressure and making sure that our opponent, when he's running Graveyard, is having to defend like an Evolved Knight right now, which you have to overspend to defend, while going for the Graveyard, and then having to poison on top of Goblins, which is a huge negative trade again. Like All these trades are starting to rack up in my favor, and I love it. We are trading so well, sir. We're doing Yu-Gi-Oh! out here, and we're ruling the duels. Uh, I don't know if you guys played any card games as kids, but I played Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. I collected so many cards, and we're collecting wins out here. We've evolved with the Night Evolution and Clash Royale, and it feels just so superb to get such a satisfying win like that one. Creatively making comebacks when you feel like you're down and out against an extremely defensive deck is one of the better feelings in Clash. It's time to steal the win from Edwin. And this Sinister Sir is sitting back and relaxing without cycling a single thing, so you guys know the deal. Dropping our goblins here, and maybe he's going to start spamming it into our Electro Giant. So Night Evolution is coming out from our opponent left-hand side. I think it's better for us to tear that apart from the skies with our Phoenix. And we can maybe do something else, like go in for an Electro Giant afterward. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, let's go Electro Giant in the back right, and then go Balloon. I'm going to drop that as soon as I possibly can. I posture it in a different spot and made sure that right as the Electro Giant crosses the river, we have just enough Elixir for the Balloon. So, he's gonna Tornado, doesn't have Executioner in Cycle, this is good. I might be posturing with a Fireball here to knock the Electro Wizard to the other side. Because if the Electro Wizard isn't able to target the Balloon, then he's not gonna have a good response to that. I think the Electro, oh, I really thought it was far enough away. He froze on defense. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> man tried to stop the bleeding. Oh, you know what? What if you're running Graveyard and I activate King Tower? Please. Yes! That's so clean. If you guys haven't done that before, use your Goblins, use your Bomber. He's just Graveyard on the King Tower and leaving immediately. This deck makes everyone rage quit. It is demoralizing to get a King Tower activation, and it's so easy to do with Tornado, especially when you have the support of Goblins and Bomber. It's hilarious how this deck is capable of crushing opponents in seconds. Their brain just gets pulverized to a pulp, and they're not able to think, so they just dip out of the game. You can use that tornado placement that I did against the Bowler, against Magic Archers, and Executioners too. We've got a game against Bon Jovi. We're going to be seeing if he's going to be singing any tunes for us today. Just going to go for bats off the side, which literally gets zero damage. We're going to show him what he should be doing. Goblins. Those get, I don't know, like 600 damage if left alone. He's going to mini pack us so we don't get that. I'm going to bomber in the right-hand side, and I can activate King Tower most of the time if the mini pack doesn't have enough health. But I don't think it does right now. It would get a hit on my tower, but it won't get a hit on my king tower. So, a little bit sad here. It's going to die right before it happens. But you guys can see the trajectory of the mini P.E.K.K.A. Where it would have been if it was just slightly stronger. So, the guy's going to have an Executioner Goblin Giant deck. My eyes got a little bit wide there when I saw the Goblin Giant come down. Because I didn't expect that. After seeing Executioner, that was very outside of the parameters for me. So, the Executioner means that he's probably going to have Tornado in the deck. If I go in for a Balloon, that would be really foolish because it would be a free King Tower activation for our dude. So instead... Oh my gosh, come on, man. You're actually going to be running Executioner Sparky with Mini P.E.K.K.A.? What are we matching it to? Uh, Sparky is one of the few things we cannot reset with the Electro Giant, so that's not good. I want to go in for a Bomber here, and then I want to go Goblins, I think. The Bats just are throwing me off. I totally just misread the deck. So, fortunately for us, he doesn't go for any arrows, so I was slightly scared of that as well. I could go in for a balloon with a night tanking, because he doesn't have bats in cycle for a bit, so I don't have to worry about tornadoing. I mean, I could tornado the Executioner, but I think that would be dumb. I'd rather tornado on top of the mini pack and activate King Tower, so we'll go and take that. We're going to get our redemption arc with tornado. Well, it's not really a redemption arc. We knew exactly the interaction before, but this time it hits. Barely, but just enough. <laughs> I was fully confident in that interaction. Okay, since the Executioner will be a potential problem for us, we're going to go in for our Bomber off to the side so then he can't Tornado and clump everything up. He tried to kill the Bomber, but the Bomber survived. We socially distanced our cards so far apart that they could not get blasted together by the Tornado. So, remember, the strategy for us is probably trying to use any type of advantage that we can get with the Bats out of Cycle, but he's going to have Bats in Cycle, so I can't really do that. Oh, I guess we can do this. Is he going to have Mini P.E.K.K.A.? Yeah, we can kill the Mini P.E.K.K.A. with the Bomber, the Electro Giant, and the Phoenix. I think it kills. I don't know. I really hope it does. 
Maybe the Executioner doesn't hit the Bomber? No! Well, yes, kind of? I don't know. Yeah, it does eventually finish it off. The Evolved Knight stayed alive for a while. What the heck? All right, kind of a weird position for us to be in, but I still think we're going to be okay if I play this well. We can Electro Giant directly into the Sparky and the Bats, so then the Bats get finished off. And then we can eat the Executioner damage because it doesn't matter that much. Then we can Tornado this so the Sparky is going to die and the Mini Pack, it doesn't hurt us too much. We can go for Goblin Surround afterward. Even if he zaps, it's not going to be able to break through the Bomber, so I don't have to spend any extra Elixir. I think that's enough to kill it. Not going to overspend to defend. Not about that life ever. All right, let's go Phoenix, Knight, and then Balloon. This is the most unorthodox way of killing bats, but it's the only way I have available. Phoenix, you're my favorite Pokemon right now. Poke down the bats. Okay, the bats are not coming down. I guess he knows that I have Tornado. Oh, he's going to use his own Tornado on defense. Great. I didn't know you had that card in this deck. That's awesome. I'm so happy you had that. Said no one ever. All right, we're going to go in for an Electro Giant here. We're going to follow through with a Phoenix and then cycle back to another Electro Giant, possibly. Or we can go Evolve Knight and then Balloon. Man, this is so rough. Let's just do this. Let's go Evolve Knight, Balloon, and then Tornado on Bats. Is he going to go for Bats or nah? He has to go Bats. He has no other play right now. But I also don't have any other play. If he Tornadoes, the Bomber is going to lock on the tower. He's got to go Bats on the Bomber. No, I should have tornadoed the bats away from the bomber and I would have won the game. I didn't think that through at all. Sometimes I see a card and I react as fast as I possibly can and that's what I did there. All right, if I fireball on the mini pack. Oh, he dropped the mini pack in the wrong spot. We can fireball now. Maybe the bomber is able to splash. Okay, this is really weird. Can the knight be a win condition? I, I don't think so, but I want it to be. <laughs> Please be a win condition for once in your life. All right, this is not looking good. But we have to native to go and kill everything and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in for a Knight. We're going to eat a Sparky Shot because it won't take out our tower. And then we can go for another Electro Giant at the river. Oh, is he going to Tornado with this? He might. I genuinely don't know. This is such a weird game. Guys, I'm going to Fireball Cycle him. <laughs> I feel like such a dummy. But we have to do it. There's no other play. All right, we're going to go for a Balloon as well. 19 seconds remaining. Mini Packet doesn't get a hit. Nice. A Tornado here. Phoenix putting in work. We can blast him with a fireball. I think we're barely going to win it, guys. Let's go. I get so fired up when we win these games by, like, such a small margin. Bon Jovi's going to be singing the songs of sorrow after that game while we're bouncing on to the next one doing our victory dance. Let's see if we can keep up the streak. Guy's going to have an Archer Queen, Hogs, and a Giant Skeleton in the banner. Those are all cards that work really well together, so we'll see if you're going to be running that synergy. We can maybe go in for a Knight in the back and try to bait out some spam in the right-hand side into our Goblins, but... Honestly, I just want to get to the night evolution. That's what I like doing. I can't be disingenuous. It's broken, and we want to break down towers with it. So I'm going to go for a Phoenix in the back, which is a little bit risky. We don't have our Tornado in cycle. We see Baby Dragon in a night, so it's probably going to be a Graveyard deck. And Graveyard is one of the worst matchups for our deck. The strategy for us is not to activate King Tower for our opponent, so we're going to go for our Electro Giant in the back. And we'll see if he goes in for a bad Graveyard. We can maybe activate King Tower with this Baby Dragon if... Oh, no, it's not going to... It's not going to walk up fast enough. That's unfortunate. I really wanted to. Oh, you know what? Let's tank with the knight, right? That's fine. Do we even need to? Is, are the goblins going to be able to soak up the damage from the baby dragon? Each goblin was going single file for us. That was awesome. That was so lucky. And the <laughs> electric giant ran away from the tombstone. Because we dropped it in the corner, he wasn't ready. He tried to do the most optimal placement in the entire game. And he got finessed. So if you're wondering, why do I drop the electric giant in the very corner in the back right? is because tombstone placements like that don't pull it. But if I drop it behind the king tower, it's actually going to get pulled, and that would be a completely different outcome. It's nice to have that happen. The guy already said GG, and he lost, despite having one of the best control decks in the game with tombstone, tornado, ice wizard. This man got rattled out of the game real fast. We tilted graveyard and buried him alive, and we're taking all the crowns tonight. On to the next one. After that glorious win against Graveyard, we're at 8,800 in the world. Hey, what's up, Enrico? So, Enrico Pro 10. He's the 10th evolution of pros. Okay, slightly scared of that Ice Spirit because it does mess up the tornado timing sometimes. If you see a Hog Rider Ice Spirit, generally you're going to be a little bit safer dropping your Knight or Goblins or Bomber, making sure that the Ice Spirit doesn't marginally push the Hog Rider away from your Tornado and then messes up the King Tower activation. Because if that happens, you might just lose the game instantly. All right, we're going to go for a Bomber here, and then I can go for Goblins afterward. A little bit risky for us to do something this dumb, but that's the way that we like to play. I want to cycle the Knight, and cycling cheap cards allows me to get there a little bit faster. So, we are going to go in for our Knight in the back, and we're already back to Tornado. 
Generally, against decent players that are going to be running Hog Rider Psycho with Firecracker, the matchup isn't that easy. They stack up a lot of Firecrackers, you might have to Fireball them, and getting through like a Tesla or a Bomb Tower is always a difficult endeavor. So I'm going to cycle my Electric Giant in the back right because we see the Firecracker out of cycle. I think this is an okay opportunity for us. We might get back to another Firecracker. We'll have to wait and see. I might just be able to ignore the Firecracker and feel really good about myself, but I don't know. We'll have to see what the dude decides to do. So yeah, I'm just going to go for a Tornado on the Hog Rider. I will ignore the Firecracker. He's going to have Bomb Tower. He tried to pull the Electro Giant, and then he has nothing for the Bloon. So the cool thing about this concept of the deck is a lot of times people are expecting to just be Electro Giant. And you try to pull the Electro Giant as far as you possibly can. And if you try to pull the Electro Giant as far as you possibly can, well, your building will not pull the Bloon then. So the building goes off to the side, the Bloon goes off to the side, and then the Great Divide happens, and then you get all that damage. It's a nice strategy, and that's why it's played at the top because people do not expect Electro Giant plus Balloon. So it's a really cool surprise factor. I'm gonna go in for either the Evolved Knight or Electro Giant. I think Electro Giant is generally a little bit smarter for us to do. We eat the Ice Spirit because it doesn't necessarily matter that much. Now we have the Evolved Knight to body block his Knight if we need to. I think is okay for us to do. I'm just gonna cycle that a little bit later. And then I'm gonna go in for a Phoenix on top of the Firecracker. And then I'm gonna tornado everything backward. Reason why I do that is because I think that we're going to get a little bit more value with our Phoenix that way and stop all but one Hog Rider hit. So, I like that a little bit more. I'm going to go in for our Balloon. And then I could Fireball on a Bomb Tower if I needed to. You know what? I think that might be the best play. But cycling two Electric Giants, that's immensely appealing to me. Two Titans on the map. That's the vibe that I go for. The Evolved Knight on the left-hand side is fully taking all the Firecracker shots. I'm going for another uh, building, so that's smart on his end. We'll go for a Knight. Cycle our bomber here. We're not going to get the Electro Giant through, but we can get back to another balloon soon. So that's what we're going for. I'm going to Fireball directly on the Firecracker. I was kind of hoping that he would spend more Elixir than he did. Now we're going to go in for this, and then we're going to go in for a Knight, and then we're going to Tornado on the Hog Rider so we don't take as much damage. But pulling that to the King Tower is extremely important. The Knight's on the Tower. Oh, the Knight. Yes, sir. Wait, I just get Balloon Death Damage, and then I Fireball, and I win. It's cool. I love that knight. I can't believe he was such a sneaky and scandalous sir. Doing that damage right underneath our opponent's nose. And Rico definitely got the good night kiss of death from our sneaky sir. Propelling us up to 7,200 in the world. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an incredible rest for your day.